Hello. Hello. Is that you, Myrtle? What do you want? I want Cadbury. The Cadbury Show! <laughs> Oh, what a beautiful morning. Oh, what a beautiful day. Daddy, is that you, honey? Oh, what a horrible morning. Oh, what a horrible day. Oh, Johnny, your singing sends me. Well, why don't you go, Myrtle? Oh, you're cute. <laughs> well, if you're going, kid, it sounds like your horse is waiting. Johnny, what are you doing with the pencil and paper? I am working on a graph. A what? A graph. You know what a graph is, don't you? Oh, sure. It's an animal with a very long neck. No, Myrtle. No, no, no. Not a giraffe. A graph. This graph shows you outstanding figures. Oh, something like a magazine cover. Yeah. It... No. No. Now, Myrtle, look here. You just have a look at this graph that I'm working on. Hmm? Now, I am doing a survey on the transport problem in this town. And if you look at this graph, you'll see that 500,000 people travel by tram on the peak hour. Yes, I know. That's the tram I catch. <laughs> hey, now, you, you look. You look right here at this graph. Now, that's right here, where I'm pointing. Mm -hmm. Now, do you know what that curved black line is? Your fingernail. <laughs> no, no, kid. Now, above that. Oh, that line on the paper. Yeah, the one that goes up like a mountain. Now, that shows you how people travel to work. Oh, that's silly. Who wants to work on a mountain? Well, oh, never mind, Myrtle. Now, look. You see this line that goes down underneath it? Oh, they're the people who travel by underground. No. No, Myrtle, no. That shows the fall off of tram passengers. Well, they shouldn't stand so close to the doors, then they wouldn't fall off. Myrtle. Mm hmm Tell me, kid, where were you when brains were being handed out? Well, I was around the corner getting my long tongue. Don't you remember? I was right behind you. <laughs> Myrtle? Myrtle, if brains were money and you lost yours, the guy who found them wouldn't get enough to make a phone call. Hey, you two, what's the trouble? Oh, no trouble, Reg. I'm just trying to prove a definite fact. Well, here's a fact you'll have no difficulty in proving. Cadbury's dairy milk is the first favorite of chocolate lovers everywhere. And the reason is dairy milk's smoother, creamier flavor which comes from that glass and a half of milk in each half pound, blended with Cadbury quality chocolate. At the low price of two shillings for the quarter pound block, you get better chocolate value when you buy dairy milk. Next time you're at a sweet counter, ask for Cadbury's dairy milk, and you'll realize why chocolate lovers everywhere are saying, I want Cadbury's. Hello there, Purse. Good eye, Myrtle. Ah, I lock that dress you're wearing. Oh, you do? My girlfriend and I threw it together. Not much of it landed on you, did it? <laughs> oh, Johnny, he's cute, don't you think? Oh, don't bother me now, Myrtle. I'm still working on this traffic problem. Now, do you realize that this problem affects each and every one of us? Even me? Sure. Why, don't you ever have any trouble when you're parking? Oh, well, sometimes, but I just get out and walk home. <laughs> <laughs> no, Myrtle, no. You... Yeah, I know what you mean. Now, kid, I, uh, what I really meant, what I really meant was parking cars. You know, parking cars, it's become so bad, it's become so bad that they've had to install parking meters. What are parking meters? Well, you put in a coin, you wait half an hour, then you put in another coin. Oh, I spent all morning playing one of those machines. I couldn't strike the jackpot. <laughs> Great. No, look, I tell you, this country needs up-to-date ideas like we have back home in the States. Do you know over there... We have great highways where you can travel at 100 miles an hour. I couldn't. Well, of course you could, Purse. Anybody could. Not me. I ride a bicycle. <laughs> okay, wise guy. Now, look, supposing you had a car. Just supposing that you had a car. Right. Right. Now, you start off from one side of America. Yeah. Uh, we'll say from New York before breakfast. You drive right through Texas. Bang, bang. What's that? Texas Cowboys. No, you just broke through the sound barrier. <laughs> And then you see, from Texas, from Texas, you drive right on to San Francisco on the other side of the nation. Then you drive straight back to New York and be home in time for tea. Well, you can do that here in Australia. You start off from Sydney and drive out. All those noises, zoom, bang, bang. Well, what's that, the sound barrier? No, you just broke an axle on the rotten road. <laughs> then you go through Melbourne, on to Perth, then straight back across to Sydney and be home in time for tea. You mean you could do that in a car? No, in an aeroplane. Your car broke down just outside Sydney. 
Well, I am going into town to have a look at the transport system and see if there's anything that I can do about it. We'll come with you, Johnny. Must you? Okay. Now, do you know, I spent all morning at the railway station and I watched dozens of trains and they all started off with a jerk. Why didn't you get up? <laughs> well, let's get a taxi. Taxi! Weren't we lucky to get a cab so soon? We've only been waiting an hour and a half. Oh, uh, driver, take us into the city, please. Righty ho. Hold on to your hats, girls. Whoops, off we go. Oh, look at that poor old man walking across the street just ahead of us. The dear old chappy. He hasn't even seen us coming. I'll give him such a scare. Oh, didn't he jump? <laughs> oh, I always enjoy doing that. Hey, do you know who he is? He's Titus McCoffin, the famous millionaire. Titus McCoffin? Isn't he the man who made all of his money out of China Ware? Yeah, that's right, Myrtle. You wouldn't think there'd be so much money in China Ware. Oh, he made pots out of it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, I'm a positive scream. <laughs> oh, I say, do look at that poor old lady over there, standing on the corner with all those suitcases. Oh, look, she's waving at me. Yoo-hoo! Oh, dear, it's the least I can do to wave back. Yeah, I suppose it is. The dear old thing. She's been standing on that corner for three days, and she waves to me every time I drive past in my taxi. Uh, do you think by any stretch of the imagination the lady's waiting for transport? I wouldn't be surprised. But you'll never get on a tram with all those suitcases. Oh, by the way, dear boy, do you mind if I double load? There is room for another passenger or two in the old jolly old cab, you know. Oh, no, 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 we jolly well don't mind. Oh, good show. I've just noticed a football team looking for a cab. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, we'll get out here, thank you, driver. Oh, you don't have to call me driver. You can use my first name, Cuthbert. <laughs> well, okay, Cuthbert, we'll get out now. Well, I'll get out first, and then you, Jack, and first can be the last out. Who's going to pay? Man behind. Man behind. Man in front. No, no, no. Just a minute. What about my fare? You with the fair hair? Yeah? Fair fare. Okay, there. My fare. Thank you. Oh, I haven't seen these sort of notes before. Oh, they're dollars. Dollars? Do you use those in the exchange in America? No, they use those on stage and call me madam. <laughs> Stage money! Robbery! What is this? Robbery! It's robbery! Please, Help! Please keep quiet! Don't make a scene! Counterfeit! Counterfeit! Why? I've got two like everyone else. Here, take this ten shilling note. Yeah. Does that make you happy? Yeah, truly. I'm delighted. Well, I must be getting along, you know. I'll have a spot of bother with my cab. The meter's been playing up. What's wrong with the meter? It keeps registering the correct fare. Tiddly bye! <laughs> Cadbury Show brings you Betty Parker and the song she sings, No More. My baby don't phone no more. My baby ain't home no more. My baby don't love me no more. My baby don't buy me pearls. He's busy with other girls. My baby don't love me no more. I shouldn't have bear him that I could forget him. Oh, why do I miss him so? But somehow I'll find me a baby new And maybe I'll pick on you You come a knocking at my door Cause my baby don't love me no Forget him Oh, why do I miss him so? But 
somehow I'll find me a baby new And maybe I'll pick on you And I'll come a knock a knock and at your door Cause my baby, my baby don't My baby don't love me no more Why is everybody saying, I want Cadbury's? Well, Cadbury's Dairy Milk Chocolate is second to none for flavor and nourishment. Dairy Milk really delights every chocolate lover. And at the low price of two shillings for the quarter pound block, you get top chocolate value. Remember, too, that glass and a half of fresh milk that goes into each half pound of dairy milk. Look for Cadbury's Dairy Milk in the purple and gold wrapper wherever good chocolate is sold. It's your best reason for I want Cadbury's. Johnny, what about taking me to dinner while we're here in town? No, Myrtle, I've got to get interviews from the passerby. Oh, gee, I'm so hungry, I can eat a horse. Oh, no, just the place. Come on, Mert. That's a very good idea. You two run along and eat. Well, all right, Johnny. I'll have a slice of ham. It'll remind me of you. Thank <laughs> Oh, you sweet kid. Well, to work, to work, to work. Oh, here comes a gentleman now. Excuse me, sir. No, excuse me, please. When you're speaking to me, you please call me Professor. I'm Professor Eisenstein, an inventor. You know, I just invented a barge pool 42 feet long. Oh, what for? It's for touching people you wouldn't touch with a 40-foot pool. <laughs> Simple. I see. Oh, Professor, are you working on any new inventions? Mm. Oh, all the time, yeah. I just got the most beautiful of all. It's a fire cart. I use it for cutting fire. Yeah, these fire cuts, they got the perfect engine. It won't break down, it won't conk out, it won't run out of petrol. Oh, goodness, why is that? No engine. <laughs> but, but, Professor, without an engine, how will you get the fire cart to the fire? Oh, everybody is asking me that question. <laughs> but also, also, I'm perfecting the motion picture. You know, this is better than 3D. Yeah, my invention, it makes it look like the actors are right in front of you. Oh, really? How's it done? With real life actors on the stage. Oh, that's, that is very clever. Yeah, terrific, terrific. Yes. My, I tell you about my other invention. It's a safety razor blade. You'll never guess what it is. A safety razor blade is so safe you won't be able to cut yourself. Why not? The razor blade is half an inch thick. Oh, yeah. Well, look, if it's half an inch thick, how does it shave off the whiskers? Oh, everybody is asking me that question. <laughs> oh, well, that was no good. That wasn't a bit of help. Now, perhaps if I ask my question in a more personal way, it might show the people how this transport business affects them personally. Yeah. <laughs> now, I'll try this lady. Uh, excuse me, madam, but could you get out of town in a hurry? Why, what's my old man done this time? <laughs> oh, well, I don't know why I can't keep out of trouble. I was only telling him last night, but it's no good talking to him. Talking to him's like banging me head against a brick wall. Matter of fact, while I was talking to him, that's what he was doing. Banging me head against a brick wall. <laughs> yeah, well, perhaps uh, if you Oh, we're could a happy you, I... couple, really, dear, you know. We get along like a house on fire. That's why I'm wearing this Hessian bag. <laughs> it's the only thing that wasn't charred on fire. Yeah, well, that's very and nice. I says to my mama, I says, oh, look, it'd be so much easier if my old man would only bring home some money, I says. I don't want pounds, I said. I'll be happy with just a few shillings, I says. But the only thing that ever comes to do our house is coppers. <laughs> well, madam, if I was to... Oh, look, I can see it's no good standing here. I mean, you can't get a word in edgewise with a man like you. <laughs> Please, isn't anyone interested in the transport situation? Doesn't anyone know where the trams and trains are going? Everyone is going to the dogs, sir. The happiness of the people is a straight, narrow path. One step to the right and you will fall into a bottomless pit. That is why we want to see radio announcers take a step in the right direction. <laughs> huh? <laughs> and, sir... Take the railway porters. No, thank you. I just had a quince. Congratulations. Good. All over the country, sir, there are hundreds of railway porters nipping tickets. Railway porters nipping, nipping, nipping all day long. And are they paid sufficient? No. No. They might get enough for themselves, but what about their little nippers? Eh? Yeah. Wait for it. But for Charlie. Hallelujah. And furthermore... <laughs> furthermore, sir... 
Take the man who invented the, the electric light globe. No. Well, no, sir. Good, kid. Keep going. Pay attention, lad. Any okay. questions? No, I'm listening. No? Do you realize about these electric light globes, sir? If he hadn't invented electric light globes, our homes today would be full of useless sockets. Yeah, that's right. That's right, sir. So, in conclusion, I would like to advise all my electors that I am the number one candidate for the next election. And believe me, there isn't anything lower than number one. I thank you. <laughs> Singing for the Cadbury Show is 16 years old Anthony Kopp and his song, Granada. Granada, I'm falling under your spell. And if you could speak, what a fascinating tale you would tell. Of an age the world has long forgotten Of an age that weaves the silent magic in Granada Today The dawn in the sky greets the day with a sigh for Granada It still can be found in the hills All around is Granada It still can be found in the hills All around as I wander along In France by the beauty before me In France by a land full of sunshine and flowers And stars and when day is done and the sun starts to set in Granada, I envy the blush of the snow clad Sierra Nevada. For soon she will welcome the stars while a thousand guitars play a soft carbonero. The moonlit Granada We live again The glory of yesterday Romantic and gay For only two shillings, you can buy a quarter-pound block of Cadbury's Dairy Milk Chocolate, the most delicious chocolate ever made. Once you've tried Dairy Milk, you won't forget the tantalizing flavor of each thick, chunky square. In each half-pound of Dairy Milk, there is a glass and a half of pure, fresh milk blended with Cadbury quality chocolate to give a distinctive, delightful taste appeal. You can't miss that shining purple and gold wrapper. That means Cadbury's Dairy Milk. Your reason for saying, I want Cadbury's. Hello? Yes, is it the Jack Happy Transport Company? We'll take you anywhere, uptown, across town, we'll even take you down. What's that? I sure we're introducing many new forms of transport like they have in other countries. Yeah, okay, we'll take you for a trip around the city sites. Our man will be right over. Purse, this is our first job. What first job? Well, you know, Jack's new transport idea. A trip around the city sites. Here's the address. You mean I take him round? Mm -hmm. Jack would think of that. How many people are there? Two. Oh, that's good. I can't get more than two into me rickshaw. <laughs> so long. <laughs> Not me. Uh, that, that that building on the right, that's the post office. Yes, yes, we know that. We've been running beside it for half an hour. You haven't passed it yet. Uh, I'm fagged out. Listen, my good man. Uh, what is it? My wife and I came to the city for a holiday. We came all the way from Uden and Datta. Uden and Datta? Uden and Datta, sir. Oh. Now, what about showing us the sights? Oh, all right. Running on. 
We find on our left the local bank. Officially opened by the governor, unofficially opened by a mate of mine. <laughs> oh, oh! Hey, I say, tell me, why did you sprint past that building? That's the police station. <laughs> and on your right is still the post office. Come along there, man. Call yourself a rich old man. Huh. Why, when we were in the trap. Oh, I just can't go any further. Oh, thank goodness there's a traffic jam. Look, I'll just rest the rickshaw up against the back of this truck here. <sighs> I'll go and sit down on that tram stop over there till I get my breath back. Well, don't be long then, my man. This traffic jam won't last forever. Oh, why did I ever let Jack talk me into this? Hey, hey, hey you there, help! The traffic's moving! I, hey! Ah, uh, I've just sat down. Come back! Hey, I'll have you up for abducting my rickshaw. Well, don't blame me. I can't do anything about it. We're being towed by this truck in front of us. Ah, well, this must be your lucky day. Lucky? We've just come down from Udnadatta. Like I say, you're lucky. That's where that truck's going. You'll be home by morning, ta-da. <laughs> Hello, the Jack Happy Transport Company. Oh, sure, we'll take a party for a cruise up the river. Yes, we have a real gondola, just like they have in Venice. That's right, our manager, Jack Happy himself, dresses up in fancy clothes, and he looks like a real gondolier. Cruising down the river on a Sunday afternoon. As I stand up here in the stern of the gondola, idly paddling along the romantic waters of the council swamp, <laughs> we are constantly reminded of our heritage. We see many signs, many signs of what our fathers left behind them. <laughs> yes, we do. Many signs as we watch dozens of old jam tins float by. <laughs> and now we look to the shore and there we see something that is a symbol of our country's progress. It reminds us of the speed at which we as a nation have made progress over the last half century. Leaving the tortoise far behind, <laughs> I stand here in the stern of this craft and I turn my head back, back across the rippling wake of the turbulent waters. And so we say... Hello. Yeah, this is the Jack Happy Transport Company. That's right. Our aim is to help out the city's transport problem. What's that? You need a tram conductress. We got just the girl. No, she doesn't need your equipment. She's got tickets on herself. Was that a job for me? Yes, Myrtle. You're a tram conductress. And remember, courtesy at all times. All the time. Fares, please. Fares? Oh, no, sir, you don't have to stand up for me. I work here. Fares? Fares, please. No, sir, I just told you, you don't have to give me your seat. I'm used to standing. Fares, please. Fares? Oh, listen, mister, please keep your seat. Look, if I get tired, it's going to stand on somebody else's feet. Fares, please. Fares. Oh, look, mister, for the last time, don't stand up. But I've got to stand up. Thanks to you, I'm three miles past me flaming stop already. It's a failure. It's a failure. All I wanted to do was help out the transport problem. Oh, Johnny, what you need is a good laugh. Get first to tell you what happened to his rickshaw. Uh, oh, no. Oh, no. No, not again. Please, no. No, I'm finished. Jack, you've still got your aeroplane. Huh? Oh, of course. I should have thought of that. I didn't know you had an aeroplane. Oh, I bought an old kite. Yeah, I knew you had a kite, but I didn't know you had an aeroplane. <laughs> Myrtle, 
Please. Myrtle, I'll need your help. You see, there aren't any instruments on the old plane, so you'll have to give me instructions over the radio. Oh, that'll be cute. But, Jack, it's night, and it's very dark. You've never done any night flying. Oh, go on. Johnny's one of the biggest fly-by-nights I know. <laughs> Come on, let's get to the airport. Purse! Purse, this is our last chance. If we make it, it'll be a triumph of man over machine. We've got to make it, Jack. But it's going to be difficult in the dark of night without instruments. <laughs> well, we'll have to rely on Myrtle. I'll call her in on the radio. Hello, base. This is you for useless. Come in, base. Base calling you for useless. What height are you? Well, I'm six foot one, fair hair, blue eyes, and I have my own teeth. <laughs> no, no. How fast can you go? Well, I'm hoping to go faster than sound. Why that? So as I can get away from your squawky voice. Hey, first, is the propeller turning over? No, but my stomach is. Oh, come on, first, come on. This is serious. This is base. This is you for useless. Mrs. C for Cuthbert. Cuthbert? Where are you? I'm here with Myrtle. Yahoo! Purse, Purse, you put your flap down and I'll put my flap down. Oh, look at us, a pair of flappers. <laughs> I only hope we don't go into a stall. <laughs> Sounds like we're already in one. Hi, Jack. What'll happen if we have to make a belly landing? Oh, you'll be all right, Purse. Uh... <laughs> Purse, you all ready? Yeah, Jack. Good. Well, Pris, if you say yeah, why are you shaking your head from side to side? I got my nose caught in the windscreen wiper. <laughs> Pris, be a big strong boy. Come on, brace yourself. Okay, and you brace yourself. Uh, another pair of braces. <laughs> Come on, this is it. We've got to do it. More than that, we must do it, Pris. Steal yourself. Steal myself? I'm not even worth pinching. <laughs> Pris, I know it's tough, kid, but be brave. This is the crisis. This calls for strength, determination, a valiant effort. Oh, Johnny, I do hope you can fly the plane down all right. What do you mean, fly it down? We're trying to open the hangar door. <laughs> Next time you feel like a chocolate treat, ask for Cadbury's Dairy Milk, the chocolate that is unsurpassed for rich, smooth flavor. Now, for only two shillings, you get the same guaranteed weight and the same quality in each quarter pound block. Also, at the same price, a Cadbury's Candy Nut, Milk Lunch, Fruit and Nut, Old Jamaica and Energy Chocolate. Buy a block of dairy milk at your nearest sweet counter and you'll realize why everybody's saying, I want Cadbury's. In tonight's Cadbury show, you heard Frank Strain, David Netheim, Neva Carglin, Kevin Brennan, June Salter and John Mellion. Songs were by Betty Parker and Anthony Cobb to the music of Wilbur Cantwell. Script by Hugh Stuckey, production No Judd. Now, this is Reginald Goldsworthy saying good night to you all from the Cadbury Show. Yeah.